So when we talk about comorbid conditions, um, you know, we touched on a few of these before. So hydrocephalus is a, is a major one. It really develops in 60 to really 90% of myelomeningocele patients that undergo postnatal closure. And up to 10% have evidence of hydrocephalus at birth. Most children who are going to develop hydrocephalus do so before six months of age. And why do you think hydrocephalus can develop after myelomeningocele closure? Well, when you're that uh, really shining star on your fourth year medical student sub eye, you can say, well, it's because you've obliterated a connection um, and leakage of spinal fluid and brought it into a contained system, which can cause a resultant buildup of cerebrospinal fluid and cause elevation of the intracranial pressure, bulging of the fontanelle, increase in um, uh, head circumference, et cetera. Now, treatment of hydrocephalus in infants with myelomeningocele can be quite variable. There are some centers that, that treat right away. There are some centers that wait quite a bit, and I think that's probably um, you know, coming more into favor as we learn more about um, the thresholds for treatment. But in general, treatment for hydrocephalus in, in infants that have an open neural tube defect include uh, apnea or bradycardic episodes, um, symptoms of high intracranial pressure, which those are a sign of. Uh, rapid or progressive ventricular megaly, and this is either de detected on ultrasound, but more typically on clinical examination based on a rapidly rising uh, head circumference or OFC. If there's CSF leak from the closure site, um, you know, certainly you want to eliminate any technical problems that may have been available, but um, typically this is a sign that the uh, pressure head from the cerebrospinal fluid is uh, increasing, and it may be a sign that the child requires CSF diversion. If there's significant hydrocephalus in the setting of a symptomatic Chiari 2 malformation, and again, I'll talk about the Chiari 2 coming up here, which is a really important category to talk about. And if there's a presence of a spinal cord syrinx, which tells uh, neurosurgeons that the, the cerebrospinal fluid may be looking for an alternative pathway um, to exit into and, and uh, intraspinal creating a syrinx can be uh, associated with neurological dysfunction. So if that's starting to happen, then uh, placement of a shunt or treatment with ETV, CPC would be a reasonable thing. So someone had uh, posed a question about survival. When you talk about uh, survival without treatment, meaning without closure, the survival rates are, are low. And the reason is that uh, significant meningitis and neurological decline uh, uh, can, can set in. Um, when you talk about um, uh, in modern day techniques and surgical closure, there's nearly an 85 to 90% survival rate but 10% of those children will, will die before six years of age. And this is becoming more rare. And this is typically due to a symptomatic Chiari 2 malformation. And late mortality in, in patients with myelomeningocele is typically due to shunt malfunction and more commonly uh, in the setting of sepsis uh, or, or kidney failure uh, due to chronic hydronephrosis in the setting of urinary dysfunction. So when we talk about neurological function, 50% of myelomeningocele uh, patients are ambulatory with bracing, and nearly 75 to 85% of, of patients are able to uh, achieve satisf satisfactory dryness with clean intermittent catheterization. And nearly 3 to 10%, up to 10% have normal urinary continence, and it's important to remember that. That's why it's so important to understand the continuum of disease um, that, that myelomeningocele and open neural tube defects bring uh, to, to the clinical table. Hey everyone, Ryan Rad here from NeurosurgeryTraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.